Hey guys, my guest today has authored an incredible children's book titled My Hair Went on Vacation that teaches inspiring lessons and reminders that we can all learn from. At two and a half, her daughter was diagnosed with alopecia, an autoimmune disease that attacks the hair follicle, which results in baldness. Instead of focusing on fixing her daughter's baldness, she shifted to raising a little girl who loves herself for her uniqueness. Together, they launched a nonprofit called Coming Up Rosies to raise awareness and funds for alopecia patients worldwide. Welcome to the show, Paula and Rosie Quinn. Hello. Thank you for having us, Mike. Thank you for having us. I am so excited to have you both here. Again, if you guys are tuning in right now and you're listening to this, you're missing out because you're missing Rosie's infectious smile that is all over in this book right here. My hair went on vacation. It's a true story, as you heard in the top and in the intro, and it's based on alopecia, something that Rosie had when she was two years old. Do you want to tell us about kind of your story a little bit and, um, you know, how your mom was inspired to, to tell this because you really had a positive attitude from the start, didn't you? Day one. Yes, from day one. So my story is, so when I was about two and a half, two and a half my hair started falling out. My mom, she was super worried. So at the time she had a full-time job at Google. So that's a really important part of our story right now. <laughs> um, so I started losing my hair. So we talked to my dermatologist and he's like, oh, she has alopecia. So mom's like, what is that? And my doctor's like, I know you work at Google. Just don't Google it. Don't do anything. Yeah. It's not self-harmless. So, so of course, as any good parent would, mom looks it up and she's like, okay, it's an autoimmune disease that makes your hair fall out. And so and there's no cure. There's no cure for it. It's not, it, it can't harm your body. There's nothing right. wrong with it. Um, it's God, just, right. It was just, it's an appearance thing, right? Yeah, it's so like your body's allergic to your hair. So your body's way of getting away from the thing you're allergic to is having it fall out. But I'm not allergic to anyone else's hair. Yeah. yeah. Just, just her own hair. And See? so, so, <laughs> um, so when I was, it didn't, about, bother, you when it didn't bother me when I was two years old. I just was thinking of like fish. I was obsessed with fish and the fish mm -hmm. tank wherever I'd go but the baldness, um, didn't, didn't, the really baldness didn't really matter I didn't really notice I went to the zoo like it was no big deal mm -hmm. um but, but at four. the age of four I started noticing because mom would go to Starbucks and um people would start to point and stare and that yeah. made me feel not that good because you know it wouldn't feel that good when people ask you if you're a boy or a girl like that made me feel really bad because mm -hmm. sure. clearly I was like at the at the age of four year old, four years old, of course, I'm wearing like sunglasses and a yeah, pink you got dress. you got your Paw Patrol sky pink shirt. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but yeah. People were questioning, and, and so we, we, so you see this smile for, for the listeners who can't see it, but maybe you can yeah. keep your smile or feel it coming through the podcast. <laughs> but we just saw that the smile was fading, and we're like, "What's mm. going on with our sweet Rosie? This is not the Rosie that we that we know and we love." But so we decided to. I, oh, hold on, can I say it? Oh yeah. Sure. Okay. But I love to paint. Oh yeah. So mommy took one of my pictures and finger painting, any type of painting. Any paint. The walls even. She would paint the, wall, the walls. My sister would do that. She did. You she both were like partners in crime. You both did it. Anyway. Yeah, she painted this right here, right? Yeah. Painting. I it. yeah, painting. But let's be real, Caroline drawn the sofa. Caroline did draw on the sofa. But let's give it back to painting. Okay, okay. so we took a painting so of yours. We took a painting of mine and mommy printed it on a headscarf for me. Mm -hmm. And so it was I gave it the, like mom gave it to me and the first five minutes of looking in the mirror I said I wanted to give this to all the bald children and mom's like I don't think we can do that because like I have a full-time job yeah, at Google wasn't, and it wasn't gonna happen it's right, not the, gonna the, happen. the logistics weren't there right which yeah, means yeah. So, and at the time, happen. like a crazy thought like it could never happen this random my well, daughter it was the first idea you didn't know until you did some research here's the cool part of the story guys everyone who's watching and listening share how this actually comes to now coming up rosies.com people can check out because you make them available right people can customize their own headscarf yes yeah, so, so, so rosie was persistent in nagging me for literally yeah, so six, like months, six months like and every Mom other day finally quit her job at google and wow. started a charity uh, sorry, company. It started as a company, but we didn't like keeping the proceeds for ourselves and we wanted to become a charity. Mm -hmm. So now 
here we are. It's been like four years we've had this charity and we have grown so much. Our smile kits. Tell them what a smile a kit smile is. Kit. What is a smile kit? That's what it is. Yeah, that's awesome. If you're wondering what a smile kit is. Sorry, I'm not giving enough detail. If you're <laughs> wondering what a smile kit is, I'm on detail mode. Okay. Detail if you're mode. wondering detail what mode. a smile kit is, it's um, a canvas, a headscarf. Sometimes we slip a little headscarf in there as a sample. Paints, paint brushes, one of our brochures. And it's all tied together in a bow. And we can ship that to wherever you are. Um, hospitals. In the USA, um, yeah. we can ship it to hospitals. We can ship it to- We've done it to, we we've done to it Ireland. To, yeah, we can ship it to Canada. your own house if you want. Yeah. I'm going to show a picture right now so people can experience and see what it looks like. I believe you have it right on your website. If mm -hmm. not, Paula, if you can send me a picture of the smile kits, how much are they for a smile kit? So for, if you have alopecia or cancer, you go to our yeah. website and you can request one. So that's, and you will get free. that's a beauty. That's the beauty of, of running a charity. Yes. Um, but some people want to buy um, a smile kit. So we do offer to sell it and it's $45. Wow. That's um, great. And the reason being is that the smile kit comes with your own custom head scarf, neck scarf, or superhero cape. And the printing for the cost of this is yeah. quite expensive because it's a custom one unique. Right. But if someone's spending $45, it's going to charity. And most people getting that is probably going to gift it to someone who has alopecia exactly. or someone who maybe has hair loss for other things like cancer or whatever it could be, right? So you yeah, and if you wanted to gift, if you wanted to gift it to someone you know who has cancer, we will give one we, to you for free. Yeah, because like, like if you know anyone who you want to give a smile kit yeah. to who has cancer alopecia, who's just bald. Mm -hmm. Well, and also you know we started donating these smile kits to children's hospitals. So now it was originally thirty the, smile kits to each hospital. Yes, but wow. our, our first hospital was Ch Lurid Children's in Chicago. That was the first yeah. one. Started. And then it started growing word of mouth. All the child life specialists were talking and hearing about these kits. And so we kind of have expanded to 25 hospitals nationwide. Mm -hmm. And we actually had child life specialists emailing us saying, I know this is for children who are, you know, dealing with baldness, but I have a child who's getting a heart transplant and they really want to make a cake. And wow. we give them a kit. I'm like, absolutely. Yeah. So now it's really, it started for baldness, but really it's kind of transcending to any child who's experiencing any sort of medical journey who just- What about you know, for COVID too, a COVID mask, right? Well, so, that's what we did, it's yes, so funny. Yes, we People are getting there. there. So the, I wanted to sample, like one to show mm. you guys what um, the headscarf will look this like. Is actually a so this is actually a headscarf. Mm. I'm just wearing it as a neck scarf. So it's better, it's like a kid size, but yeah. adults wear it too. My mommy wears it. Too. So it and actually, so um, it's all one piece. It doesn't tie together. Uh, two. Wow, that's really nice. I have one of those too. Yeah. So people were emailing us saying, "I know you sell these head scarves. Could we use them as like a face mask?" And huh. I was like, "Oh!" And we got a lot of requests. If you double, so that's this, actually how the head scarf goes on. It's kind of like a one of the two. You this show is the headscarf them, version. Show them how and you do then, it. so if you're not feeling like wearing your headscarf at the moment, you can always pull it down into a fancy scarf. That's great. Mm -hmm. And then, if for you're COVID, not you if, for COVID, if you're not wanting to wear a headscarf or a neck scarf at the time, you can bring a portable mask anywhere you go. Now, this is not doubled up. You have to so, double what it you up. do it is you put it on, take a part in the middle, and fold it down with your chin and mm -hmm. now it'll look like that and you double it up so now That's your mask right. will be effective more protection i didn't think about well, we, that. i wasn't doing that for mine you you well, taught me something very valuable right there rosie yeah, and you when you're not wearing your mask you can pull it down just use it and then when you're ready yeah. well it's, so during COVID, a lot of the charities have really you know felt the the burden of you know not receiving donations but during COVID, we were actually really busy because people wanted Mass. to buy masks and so we had a campaign that was buy one give one so basically if, if you, you buy a mask we will give one to a family and the at, Lori children at the children's hospitals hospital. we, sent them, we sent them to all to all of our partner hospitals we sent them to patients yeah. um 
children because, you know, it was really daunting and scary for kids to be seeing everyone wearing masks. Absolutely. So yeah. A lot of the, the hospital, like the MRI consultants or um, technicians, rather, the nurses, they were wearing the mask over their under mask. Because, so you know, the That's kids, cute. they were yeah. afraid of the surgeon mask, like if they're getting. Oh, yeah. They're not a, not like, a friendly. I never thing. Knew that. Too. Yeah. And the problem is I break out when I wear surgeon masks. Like yeah, I get like hives. little hives. I guess my skin is just really sensitive. So I wear this. And same if your skin is really sensitive, you can just wear yeah. this. It's easy right. piece. I got two things I want to say here. I'm over here. I just I'm letting this is the Rosie show. She's taking over. Um <laughs> but I got I gotta regain control of my own show here, okay? But you mentioned Lurie Children's Hospital, which if you're not familiar with that guys and you're tuning in, that's in Chicago. That's where Rosie and Paula are from. And also we have a couple new friends that are from Chicago that were recently on the show, Haley and Lori or Linsky, friends of yours. I'm always Hi. rocking Haley's band. So we want to say thank you to Lori and also Allison Fody Bork, because the two of them connected us mm -hmm. through uh, they have their own company that they're with, Forward Publicity. Right. So mm -hmm. shout out to them. Yes, big shout out. They're big angels. Shout out. They're, they're angels. They're awesome. Miss Lori and Haley and Miss Ellie. Well, and, um, and Ellie, her daughter. And Ellie, Ellie her daughter sweet. Ellie. They're all awesome. They helped us. They helped. So mommy's they helped making, us publish, publish the book. And mommy's actually. making a book for adults yep. about like how to deal with your child. She's trying to make another one We're for not adults. Talk about that one yet. Oh. <laughs> But I will say Lori is kind of like a guardian angel. She wrote many, I, we met her like three years ago. She wrote an article on, on Rosie mm -hmm. and, the that's smile how started. and that's how we met. And then, you know, I, so going back to how I wrote the book, fast forward, when I was, when Rosie was first diagnosed, I went to therapy because I was having a really tough time figuring out how was I going to raise this little girl to love herself? being bald. Wait, like and, deep breath therapy? Yeah, deep breath oh. therapy. Like mm -hmm. legit therapy. And my therapist was like, and also how I deal with the strangers who come up to us and feel the need to say, what's wrong with your daughter? Why aren't you covering her up? Why isn't she wearing wig? I mean, there was a lot of that going on. So right. went to therapy. My therapist suggested that I write down my feelings. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not really into journaling. Sure. So I kind of, I wrote this book and it was more a tool for us to use as a family and to help Rosie, you know, deal with you know, the just strangers. And I kind of, after a year, I kind of put it away because Rosie actually was the inspiration of the title. She, she saw me sad uh -huh. and I was, just, yeah, I thought I was hiding my feelings. And she went up to me and she's like, mommy, don't worry. My hair is just on vacation. And it was kind of one of those like aha moments. I'm like, yeah, you know what? It's like, like someone slapped you in the face with a dead fish. Yeah. I was like, wait, I need to be on team Rosie. This dead fish. Like, Rosie, you that? are so funny. I, so remember I said I had two things I wanted to talk about. The first one was a shout out to Lori and Allison and Leary Children's Hospital. The second one is I want to let everyone know before we started recording this, I was talking, you know, I just met Rosie for the first time. And this is the second time I'm talking with Paula. And I was letting them know that before I start every episode, I get these little butterflies. You know, when you go up on stage, whether you're playing an instrument or doing a speech, and I still get that. And that to me is important because it means that I'm excited for what's about to happen and I really want it to go well. And I was really excited to meet you, Rosie, because I, I've heard so many good things and I've seen you in a couple other videos and you've got this, this, this beaming personality. And I am over here and I keep thinking this in my head. How am I talking to a seven-year-old right now? You are so well-spoken and like, I mean that, you know, it's the greatest compliment I can give you, how you are when you're, you know, 17, 27, who knows, the whole world is, is waiting for you to take it on. Uh, whatever you have aspirations for, I guarantee it. I will bank on that, that you're going to get there because of your personality. Thank you. I'm actually nine. Oh, she's nine. nine. Okay. Can you believe that? Yeah, my sister well, I take, I take the whole thing back. Yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah. My sister's seven. So like, don't worry okay. about it. You got a no, but even for she's nine, are you kidding? Haley's Rosie, seven. That she's seven. You're you're nine, but still nine years old. I mean, come on, you you're just remarkable. I love it. She's you know, I th I think that this whole situation, because adversity builds character, right? Mm -hmm. And and a lot of the people I interview on my show sometimes they're entrepreneurs, which means they started their own business, right? And yeah. guess what happens when you start a company? Do you think it always goes smoothly right away? No, well, there's bumpy okay. it's like, roads. We're gonna have some bumpy starts. Yeah, so so we're, we're here in. 
I hear people a lot of times tell their comeback stories or how they had to, you know, go through these crazy times and come back and, and they never, here's the thing, they don't give up, right? The people that are on this show that are really inspiring, the one thing that I can tell you is common among all of them, they don't give up. So when you get knocked down, you don't lay on the mat, you stand right back up right. really fast. And you did that. And I don't know how, what the magic was or if it was God or the universe putting that in your heart, but it, it sounds like um, you had a really good attitude about it. Yeah. My mom just thinks it was God. <laughs> well, I'm with you there, but I also think it's you because everybody has their own remarkable personality. And you know what we, I don't want to skip over this though, because you know, in the book, it shows you in school and a couple of the kids are kind of pointing at you, like you said, and, and they're glaring over at you. Like, Look, and you're thinking, what do you, you know why they're looking at you, but you can't really understand why they're not understanding or accepting, right? So there's this moment right here in school, yeah. you know, where, where the teacher's kind of taking you aside and, and trying to explain it. Um, but can you talk about, you know, it's, it wasn't always roses, right? Coming up, you know, roses, everything smelled the roses. Yeah. So there was, there, there were some times when you, you were sad, right? Can you talk about um, if uh, there's a parent watching this right now, maybe they want to share this, this part of the interview with their child, or I'm going to share this with my daughter, Isabel, like maybe she's in school and someone's picking on her for something. Can you, can you help us uh, how we can get through that? What, what do you recommend? Yeah. So my number one is to not be an easy target. If you are confident about yourself and if you are happy about yourself, then if you are, feeling very brave and just happy about the way you look or if there's someone bullying you don't be an easy target if they say something rude be like okay thanks for the advice kill them with kindness, kill don't with kindness. Them, but goof around with it right you know if they're trying yeah. to mock you if you think like hey i'm that's funny i'm gonna be funny too it kind of bounces back and they're gonna go i don't know what to do with rosie that nothing seems to rile her up right saying something mean you'd be like okay that was nice advice and that get them sometimes you just want them to be so angry and mm -hmm. not at you at someone else or not at anyone so mm -hmm. you just say thanks for the nice advice and they'll get a little angry and honestly it, if you ask me it helps me a lot yeah because you're being kind to your enemy right that's such a great lesson and when you could do that that's that's humility right that is I don't know, can't even think of the right word for it because my vocabulary, I'm Italian. I got like 18 words in my vocabulary. <laughs> we are talking about that before we started recording as well um, because we're giving a shout out, right? We got to give a shout out to the artist here, the illustrator, Chiada Shivati. Am I yeah. saying that right? Yes, um, Chiada Shivati. Yeah. Yes. Chiada Shivati. Oh, you got you to say what that hard T in there. She's going to preach, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah, this the artwork in this book is tremendous and I don't, I, I want to make sure, um, we all, you know, appreciate what Rosie just said, because it's not easy to say that when you're getting picked on in school, kill them with kindness, laugh with them and, and let them know that that's not going to bother me. I'm, I'm confident with myself. I know that I'm going to do great things and make people smile because you're smiling, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I don't like to assume, but as you went on, you know, you were two, you weren't in school yet at that age, but once you got into school, you were about four or five, right? And then six years old. You were probably going in the first grade, meeting new kids every year. Did you feel like maybe the first week of school was rough, but then after that, they thought you were you were just as cool as anyone else, right? I don't think the first, well, this year, the, this year, the first, you know, we're all in fourth grade. We're mm -hmm. all like, oh, you know, I don't really care about any other differences. I just care about having friends and, you know. Yeah. And so fourth grade is like everyone sort of understands now. Every once in a while. Is it a lot of the same friends and, and same kids? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so once you become, just be nice to everyone and, and anyone you meet. And well, your school goes, her school goes, and maybe this is probably a, a parent, a parent advice. Like we chose a school that Rosie would be at for a while. Yeah. Um, so she started there at pre-K when she was four and mm -hmm. she'll stay there until eighth grade. And not that we want to not have her experience a transition of going to like a traditional middle school. It just, we wanted, you know, to not always have to explain herself yeah. day after day because when we're out in public, 
we, she does have to explain herself. Every day, if, yeah, you're at the store. grocery store grabbing a couple groceries. Yeah. And, what if we're looking at schools? But I will say this year was interesting. Everyone knows Rosie. Mm-hmm. But last sure year she did have an incident, like when the when the younger kids come in, they're new to the school. And so like Rosie actually had a little incident yeah, last, so, like, last spring. Yeah, during recess, there were all these kids and they were walking up to me and they were pointing and they're like crowding around me and they're like, they're You're curious. Bald, you're bald. Why are you bald? They're trying to reach for my head. And I was like ducking and I was like, ah. So I talked to the teacher because I was crying a bit. Uh-huh. I was crying a bit because I didn't really like it. Yeah. How they all just like overwhelming me and it wasn't like one or two, face. it was like it was, ten. It was, it was like, like a lot of kids. Different. It was like five, seven different lot, kids. And you know, for a girl my age, that's a lot. So, so what did you do? You brought the book. I brought the book and it wasn't published at the time. So I brought the book and I told them to keep it a secret because it wasn't published. It, it wasn't published yet. And so they're like, you know, that's like kind of a secret to like get. Little. Did you use you use it as a tool to teach the kids that were kind of picking at you? Hey, yeah, look, so I read nice them. Yes, yeah, so the I book. read them the book, and in the back there's a teacher's guide, and they love nice. the book so much they wanted to do the teacher's guide, and that just yeah. made me so happy. I, that- to, I have that in my notes to talk about the teacher's guide because of how cool it, it, it has a lot of great talking points. So I recommend anyone who gets the book check out the teacher's guide for the activities. Um, and one of the activities right here is post activity questions right so how did rosie feel when she received the special scarf from her mom and dad who are the special people in your life that help you feel better i think everybody can think about that at any age right and then there's gather students in a circle for the self portraits what makes you stand out that's one of the things in this book it doesn't matter whether someone has alopecia or xyz um it's all about what makes you stand out you know and with haley it was her being small in her book you know, because she was kind of getting picked on for being small, but then she flipped it around to, well, there's benefits of being small. I can fit in the tree fort and I can do all kinds of cool stuff. And I'm the last one to get wet when it rains. And so she has her story. And so it's kind of like our, um, you know, shortcoming, if you want to call it that, you Mm -hmm. know, not having hair or being small or whatever someone has can be considered kind of your shortcoming, but you flip it to your superpower, right? That's the difference. And we all have something. Some, it some can of us, be, and this book isn't just for like if you lost your hair, it could be like I lost my eye, I lost my leg. It could yeah. be for anything. Talking about and any difference. There's so many other books that I've read that talk about differences. Wonder is one of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially get older. So, I mean, there's a lot of great resources. There were not a lot of books for baldness mm-hmm. um, that I really found. So that was. And I think that's probably why I, I wrote this because I didn't want Rosie to grow up feeling like she was weird or she sure. should be ashamed of how she looked. And yeah. it just really, you know, when I press pause in the book and we would go on adventures, like we we put it away. And then a year ago, my husband's like, you know, we're always trying to find ways to raise money for the charity. This is on a road trip. On a road trip. And he said, you know, that book that you wrote for Rosie a long, long time ago, it's like you, know, you went on like adventures and all these fun things. He's like, you should like pub- finish it and publish it. And then, you know, the proceeds can go back to the charity. So mm-hmm. I remember I had my laptop and I was like, I'm like, I even know where the book is. So I opened up my Google drive. I did a search like Rosie's book and like up it popped. And obviously I had to finish it because at the time we didn't have the charity. We didn't have the head scarves. Um, and we hadn't done all these other amazing things. And it just was such a powerful tool because I always get parents asking like, how do you do it? How, right. how is Rosie so confident? Like, I have a bald child. Why Why isn't my and child like Rosie? And I'm mom like, wishes I was a boy, but she talks to mother, to mom. At first. Who have boys who have alopecia. It's um, hard for them, too. It's hard for them, too. It's It doesn't matter what gender you are. Mm-hmm. It's hard for anyone who's bald. And yeah. you know it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially, like, men in their late 40s and early 50s. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm kind of joking a little bit here, but people, you know, start losing their hair a little bit. And they're very, they're very aware of it, and it really lowers people's confidence. So it doesn't always have to be total hair loss. It could be a little bit of hair loss over time. Like you said, it could be a number of different things. It could be someone who loses their eyesight. I actually interviewed someone recently who their mother lost her eyesight. I believe she was around 70, and he started a company, uh, The Blind Guide, G-U-I-D-E, to have resources and information on blindness because people who are losing their eyes. So he said that even with Google and everything, there wasn't like a lot of clear resources you could find and get like great 
topical things to follow. And so he created this whole concept behind it. Okay. Amazing. You know, and that's another thing. It goes to show like everybody on this planet has a purpose and you guys found your purpose. Paula found her purpose through yeah. Rosie and the book is launching, you know, into other people's lives as inspiration. But, you know, I'm, I'm just telling anyone who's listening or watching right now, find your purpose. What's the thing that you can do that's incredible and go inspire people. And it could be a charity. It could be, you know, starting a business. It could be anything. It could literally be just calling someone right now and asking them how they're doing. Make them Absolutely. Smile. And I feel like if, said, if you're going to do something, this is the year to do it. Like, you know, and you know, like if you're going to do it, if you're going to do it. Yeah. Like, so I got your few years, like two years ago, three years ago, I got my ears pierced. Mm -hmm. but, oh, yeah. So That's I good. went to, uh, it's like, so I got my ears pierced because I want people to know I'm a girl and I want to yeah. have at least some sort of accessory, you know? Yeah. I can't wear bows. I can't wear hair clips. Mm -hmm. um, that was scary for her. I mean, she that was scary. She but really it's wanted worth it. it. It's worth it. Yeah. Hey, mom, you got it was a it was a funny story, but too. that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but she but conquered here's some, fear. Go ahead, go ahead, Paula. <laughs> no, no, she conquered her fear and she got her ears pierced, and now people know, like they have. Yeah, you know, it feels feminine and she very likes. cute. Yeah. Here's what I'd like to get to. I saw um, Rosie. I saw you did a video. Okay, I did a little research on you, right? Just to see what you're going to be all about and what to expect tonight. And I saw you say in a video, anyone can be a hero, right? So if everyone could have a hero, why doesn't it be you? You could be the hero to other people. And I believe, I truly believe that you're a hero to many and what you're doing. But I was wondering, who do you consider your hero? Ruth Bader Ginsburg, no doubt. Ruth yeah. Bader Ginsburg. When I grow up, I want to be waiting for that question, weren't you? You were sitting there. That's a softball question. <laughs> like, come on, bring it up, bring it up. <laughs> but my follow up is why you were about to say why that's your answer. Because I want to be a Ruth. Uh, sorry, not a Ruth. Oh. I want to be a Supreme Court justice when I grow up. Wow. And if I'm still the first to have alopecia. That would be great. Hey, I'd feel a lot more confident if you were in there. <laughs> I, I don't know too much about it. I try to stay out of politics. It's yeah. not good to be ignorant. But I feel like those that watch it all day long, 24-7, they got Fox or CNN or whoever, left, right, center, wherever you are, um, it's good to be educated, but man, does it really bog you down. So yeah, but I think it's great. If you have a vision for that, so nine-year-old Supreme Court justice, holy <laughs> smokes, this, this future is bright. Between you and Haley, I think we're in good hands. I, I have faith in, in I'm, our humanity. With well, this is about too, right? And Isabel as well. Isabel. Absolutely, Isabel. Yeah. So, Isabel, if you guys again are tuning in, that's my daughter who um, I read this book to her. This and thank you guys for sending it to her. She absolutely loved it. And you know what? Isabel and I never really talked about kids being bald or people losing their hair prior to having this book. It really allowed us to have like a sit down and explain that sometimes things happen to people that they don't understand why they happen. And they can sometimes, like in your case, it, there's no medicine to change it, especially not chocolate sauce, like you say in the book, right? You hope it would I said in the book, yeah. So I talked to the FDA, and I was like six. When that happened. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like six. Way back then, yeah. Way back then, <laughs> it was three years ago. Three years. I know. I'm with you. I'm just um, teasing. So, um, of course, I would ask for a medicine that would taste like chocolate sauce and wasn't an injection, mm -hmm. and they said. Well, they didn't tell me anything, but they had a microphone. I'm like, oh my gosh, a microphone. I really want to go. That's her that. requirement. Well, so, here's, uh, let me tell this part, my, okay, ver yeah, my yeah. perspective of the story. So, you know, there's a room of 200 people. There's a panel of like about 20 doctors mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they called upon people who are living with alopecia to tell their story so that they can consider fast tracking some trials or some, some therapies. Cause there's like, as we said, there's no known therapies dedicated to alopecia. So it was a very heart-wrenching day like people were getting up and telling their personal stories and removing their wigs and there were a lot of tears and emotions from both men and women mm -hmm. and up comes Rosie she's I, they asked me to stand up because I was the only one in the room who wasn't medicating Rosie mm -hmm. with all the you know because she was so young and it just nothing was really effective so what's the point and I Rosie's like pulling onto my dress like mommy I want to talk I want to talk I want to talk so it's I gave her the microphone. And once she gave me the microphone, I like stood up right away. I'm like, yes. And everyone in the room 
just started it was, uh-huh. it was it was what was needed because uh-huh. it was so heavy uh, all the testimonies were just gut wrenching and here came this you know six year old and he's like I want medicine that's safe for kids and tastes like chocolate sauce and, and they just, were all like laughing for people like started clapping two minutes amazing. and I was like oh my gosh so what was, did I say that's funny yeah. but it was just it was needed and out of the mouths of okay. babe like it was just well, the, the the right time we talk about this year being crazy as we record this we're in the middle of october during the pandemic um some places are you know post quarantine Mm -hmm. some workforces are still limited in numbers of who can be there um we're all still doing the six foot deal um and so there's a lot of adversity this year and we talked about that word already um but you're right it's if if there's ever a time when we need to invigorate some positivity and energy and comedy into it this is the year, but you know what? I always believe it's that way. Um, you know, whenever I was little too, and I'd have to go to the doctor or have something done or a procedure or whatever, or just even, you know, the dentist or something that kids aren't looking forward to. I always got through it by just putting a comedy on before or after. And it just changes your, 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 the way you feel like your whole body language changes. You're a little bit looser and, um, it always works for me. So, you know, I was, ta- I think I might've been telling this to Haley as well, that uh, something I like to do if I'm out in public and I just see someone who maybe looks like they're having a bad day, my number one thing I like to do is just to make them laugh. So if they're in a, cashing me out in line at the grocery store and they look like they've probably been there for 10 hours, everyone's probably treating them like garbage. They got their mask on, no one's looking at them and uh, just, you know, make them laugh. I mean, I remember going, I got a coffee the other day and the guy was wearing, I'm in Buffalo, if you couldn't tell by the Bill's stuff behind me, but um, he was wearing a Josh Allen jersey and it was really cool. It's the red one, which is like their alternative jersey. And it looked really nice. And I complimented him. And like the guy just went from being miserable, handing me my cup. Ooh, like he just gave me a compliment and we're talking back and forth where he bought it. And um, we talked about the game and everything else. And it was just really nice to, to to see someone like his attitude changed, you know, and all that, all I'll tell you is people really, when you show interest in someone and it's genuine, you're not trying to get something from someone and manipulate genuine interest in someone's well being. That's like the best thing you can give somebody. And I'm going to tell you just little acts of kindness. Mm-hmm. Make what are some things that you, that you would do, Rosie? What are some acts of kindness that you think of? Well, I like to compliment people. I really like to be kind to people, whoever I meet, hold the door open, um, Mm -hmm. say thank you whenever I can or please. Um, But just being kind, whatever I think is kind, and do that to other people, and they'll be kind back. But if you send a bad mood out toward people, they're not going to be kind back. Bad vibes, right? Yeah, so so positive vibes, that's an energy. Everything's an energy. So when you make other people positive energy, it spreads, right? It's contagious in a good way. Sometimes someone might have said something about me that hasn't made me feel the best about how mm-hmm. I look. Um, but I just stuff that deep down inside, and I don't let anyone know that on the inside I'm hurt. On the mm-hmm. outside, I just stay happy, and eventually – that's yeah. sad. It just slowly goes away. That's a very good way of looking at it because if you kind of take, let's just pretend it's a little dot of kind of sadness and it's surrounded by a huge circle of happiness and joy, eventually that's going to eat it up and it's going to be gone, right? That's a good way of looking at it. The other thing I want to point out, and I'm not a doctor or a you know a mindset coach or a, a psychologist or anything, but I do know this that it's okay to not be okay sometimes. So when you're not feeling okay, you know, tell mom and dad, you know, hey, this happened at school. I'm just a little bummed about it. That's okay. Get it out. Talk about it. And then you're quicker to the next move, right? The next move is happiness, right? And I think that's the other thing. Rosie's been very expressive at home. Like, you know, so-and-so said this today and it really made me feel sad or, I, you know, I wish they hadn't said that. So it's mm-hmm. been, but honestly... Been, they say it. I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, I don't really care, but I still want to tell mom and dad about it. You of know? course. That's good. Which That's really good. Because they care. They want to know how that moment yeah. happened and then want to know that you guys can move through it. But it's mm-hmm. important to know that it happened because we do care yeah. as parents. We do care. And we always talk like, well, what could you have said next time or differently? Yeah. You know, and it's just good to talk about it. It's yeah. Good to- Absolutely good to talk about it. 
Um, we talked about quarantine and the pandemic. What's one new skill, at each of you individually, one new positivity that you can take away from this whole thing? From we'll go with COVID. Paula first. I'll let you go first. From COVID or for just this, our, our experience? You know, this whole, this like pandemic in general, what's something positive that you can take away from it? So for me, I, it's a double-edged sword. I love the family time. Mm-hmm. And I love that COVID kind of forced us to put, press the pause button on all of our like busy lives. And we just kind of slowed down. And it was... Mm-hmm. It was kind of like God's way of saying, hey, we got to slow down. Yeah. We're all such busy bees. Mm-hmm. we got to spend time with our family. And yeah. I think that, that for me, I like that. I mean, there's days yeah. I, we, I felt like, I'm okay, we, we had had enough family time. Like, we yeah. need to, like, go do something You're else. You're in but, close quarters with nobody's. Yeah. Yeah. But, and then we're the planning part, to, like, go outside and we're under quarantine. And I was like, oh, right, we can't go outside. <laughs> so, but I think for me, it's family. What, what was your silver lining to COVID? We always talk about silver lining. So what was yeah. your silver lining? Honestly. I'm going to say the fact that the teachers were willing to do virtual learning. I got to still see my friends, but also I liked the family time and all this free time I had on my hands. Mm -hmm. I could read. I could take a nap. Mm -hmm. I could sometimes watch TV. I could do my schoolwork and I'd still be having family time. I'd still be petting my dog. I'd still be playing with my sister. I'd still be, I don't know, doing whatever it is. And, so I got more efficiency. You're able to get more done because yeah, and I, I took some I time agree. to notice if you have more time on your hands, it's actually going to be a less busier day and you're going to feel less overwhelmed. Yeah. How about this? If you have free time on your hand, what can you do with that free time? That can inspire I, you know, whatever, right? Yeah. Um, and that's actually my takeaway is, um, you know, that hey, I, I love meeting people for coffee. The way I was doing business before for Social Chameleon was calling people and meeting them at their place of business or for a cup of coffee to kind of learn their story and then put together a presentation or proposal. And it's important to have that kind of in-person FaceTime. But I would drive all over town and maybe see like three to five people in a given day. And now I can Zoom a half hour. I can do eight meetings in a row. I can get lunch in. I can you know, yeah. do an interview for mic up. And then I still have three hours at night to catch up on everything because it's like bing, 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 all like happening. There's no driving around. There's no, you know, getting off track. If I'm at the coffee shop, I used to run into people all the time I knew and I would lose hours sometimes just chit chat and water cooler. And there's a different version of the water cooler talk, right? So I think it's important. Silver linings are a great way to look at life. That's called perspective. Um, this book, I know I have a question right here that, that goes into it. Um, there's some, it really allows you to take a different perspective because someone could see baldness as a downside. And then you can just flip it and say, look at this amazing thing. We have these customizable head scarves that we have smile kits, (laughs) the name smiles in, in the title. Um, what I want to make sure we, we do again, people can check you out on social media Instagram, yeah. it's coming.up.rosies. Website mm-hmm. is cominguprosies.com. And simply on Facebook, if they search for coming up rosies and it's R O S I E S, they can find you. And here's the cool part about your book they can get it autographed. They can. So, hand autographed, I promise you. Cross my heart, it is not a stamp, it's not printed yeah, on there. I, the real deal. Sharpie, I literally have them right behind me. We use them to sign these books. Yep, there you go. And we apologize if there might be a misspelling because sometimes yeah. that happens. But hey, you know, but hey, nothing you, know I'm you guys spelled Isabel's name correctly. Oh, good. Thank goodness. And good. I'm going to say this. I don't know how many of my family members watch my show, but sometimes they don't get it right on like Christmas cards. So it's <laughs> <laughs> got it right. It happens, you know. It happens. You know, when you just, you know. It's a different spelling. I S A B E L is not the traditional Isabel spelling. So, but we, she's not traditional. She's got her own quirky personality, right? She does. And I could just, by looking at the video, I could tell that she is. Maybe sometime we'll do a a FaceTime call where you guys can talk together. Yes. Yes. Sometime soon. Yeah. When, when, When I try to show her some things and have conversations that might be inspiring. I do it through play because the time that I notice when she listens to me, it's when we're playing together. 
that's when she's happy. We're tuned in. If I tell her certain things that I'm trying to teach her to learn, she can get bored pretty quick. But once I have her attention and we're playing with toys, I can teach her some positive lessons that way. But I really, what I would love her to do is have some friends like yourself and, hey, you're in Chicago, we're in Buffalo. It's a phone call away. It's a video chat away um, where she can hear you tell your story and be inspired and meet the girl in the book. I think that'd be wonderful. Let's set that up. Yeah. Let's totally. schedule it. Let me know how your calendar is. I know you're very busy. You got interviews. Well, you know. No. Uh, well, just a few podcasts here and there. Here and well, there, you know. <laughs> you know. Well, I'll have to check with your, your PR team, too. Yeah. 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 So some people like to think of me and mommy as the founders, but it's not just a charity about me or my mom. It's a family charity. Mm-hmm. And we're using the profits to buy um, stuff for the, the smile kits, mm-hmm. the art supplies, and to donate, to buy the boxes, to put the smile kits in. Yeah. It's all like a chain. And we all work and together. And we all work dad together. Helps. Our dad, Carol. my dad helps, my sister Caroline I was going to say, do we want to give it, we got to give a shout out to Pops and your sister, right? Dad. And Caroline, she writes some business cards here and there. Oh, yeah. that is cool. Make someone smile. That's great. So yes, yeah, so they're, really they're always good to have handy. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. There's three amazing things right in the written in the book. I took this right, right out of Paula's handwriting here. <laughs> Great message. Three things will bring you happiness, right? So number one, make someone smile every day. We talked about that. Number two is one of my favorite things. I always say, be grateful, right? I have it on my mug here, customized mug, be grateful. And then third is something I need to remember. What is it? Do you, do you know the third part? Remember to make your bed. <laughs> yeah, remember to make your, yeah, it says it. Um, in it's the, right in front. It's the first page. But yes. And that is really to, for the girls because I feel. Okay. I want to read this little bit because I want to tell you, like, now I'm going to have to make my bed every day. Yeah. It's okay, a good so life skill. It's to a good Larry life skill. for teaching us the importance of making at least one person smile every day. So my dad. Yeah. I love you more than Nutella. And then and to Rosie and Caroline, remember these three things and life will bring you happiness. So make someone smile every day. Be grateful and don't forget to make your bed every single morning. Why, why do you think that's important though, Rosie? I think that's important because if you make your bed every morning, you will feel accomplished and have a great start. You will start off amazing. You will have a great day. Yeah, you're right. Do you know I bought a book that was um, how to be successful in business, and one of the first things in the book he said was make your bed. Yeah, I think my dad. There was this. There was this a general, like a five star general. I saw that too. Yeah, goal uh, goal cast video, yeah. which is like very um, positive. You know and I was always raised by making my bed. I mean, it's maybe I take it to the extreme. Like, let's say it, on the rare occasion that I don't, mm-hmm. when I bed time, I will make it. Before I get in, like I, I like I just you'll burn. remake it later if you didn't make it because you're like I did it. Yes. I just and it's like what I said. If you wake up, you feel accomplished. You you know. You know what what really builds confidence? This is something again that I'm learning through the the people, the guys and girls. I'm reading their books and watching their videos and being inspired. Is that consistent? Um, basically, your brain, right? When you do something, you say, I'm going to finish writing this school paper by 7 p.m. And you hand it in. It's done at 6.50. Your brain says, I wanted to do it, and I did it. Wanted to make my bed in the morning. Wanted to do it. I did it. Um, I was gonna, I'm going to call my dad at work today on the phone for lunch. You wanted to do it. You did it. And you're teaching yourself that you're accomplishing these things. So you're building your confidence. And, and that really, like, it, so something as small as making your bed actually is wiring it's a it's a um physical it's a physical thing that's actually happening in your brain by the way i i need to learn that the third one you know i i don't always do it myself so and, yeah i know i'm Stay not here. off the hook i wake up at like seven o'clock and mom's like we're late for school <laughs> and I'm, like, <laughs> no! go. I'm so overwhelmed but <laughs> That happens sometimes because hey, at least you have a bed well, to make. I mean, normally there's, some kids who, like eight o'clock. there's some kids who don't even have a bed. So you should be grateful true, that you true, have true. a bed to make. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got a few more questions and I have some extra questions for Rosie as well. 
I think I mentioned this to you guys before we started recording the mission of my show to inspire people to be brave and bold in pursuit of their dreams. So Rosie, if you can talk to our audience, right? They're listening, they're watching you right now. What would you tell them to inspire them to go and do what's in their heart? Be brave and bold in pursuit of their dreams. I don't know. I think you are capable of doing anything that you think you can do. Mm -hmm. If you you can ride a horse, you can ride a horse. If you think you can go surfing, you can go surfing. If you think that you're going to get a good grade and you're on your math test, you're going to get a good grade on your math test. Positivity is key here. (laughs) And, you know. And hard work, maybe. Hard hard work. work. Of course, hard work. Not being afraid to fail. No doubt. Not being afraid to fail. Well, I put that sort of on the negative side. Mm. Sometimes can I add to that? I'd like to add to that. I don't mean to interrupt, but I like where you're at because this is something I teach Isabel a lot too. And I think it's important for anybody, not only kids, but when you have the positive mindset, you still need to take the action. Like Paula was saying, right? Mom was saying, okay, well, you got to do the hard work, but someone who has positive mindset first and then does the hard work, don't you think their results going to be better than someone who's thinking, I'm not going to do this. I can't do this. I'm probably not going to get an A. I don't think I'm going to do it. I might not even want to show up tomorrow to school. And then they have to still take the action and do it. The chances yeah. of them scoring higher than someone with the positive attitude is is less likely. So I think it's really both, like you said. So I'm going to uh, pass, pass the uh, imaginary microphone up to mom and let's hear what mom has to say. So... Oh, this is such a hard one. You know, I I think along the same lines is just don't let fear incapacitate you. Um, I just just go for it. Try it. You know, if you fail, you'll you'll learn from your mistakes. If if mm-hmm. you don't fail, you might be wildly successful. Um, and if it's something that you that makes you happy, um, I think you should just just try it. As don't, as don't be afraid. It's not negative. Yeah. Well, no, I'm just saying like something that makes you happy, like maybe I don't know, buying yourself a thing of flowers or but he's FaceTiming also, your friend. But or, he's talking about like starting like maybe a business or a company oh, or like or yeah, that's more of your like, department. I don't know, just you know what? If it means something to you and you're passionate about it, you'll make it happen. Yeah, do it, right? No how much hard work it is, you'll make it happen. Yeah. I don't mean for this to be a curveball, Paula, but if you could be known for one thing, what would it be? Ooh, my kind heart. For making chocolate. <laughs> Mommy has chocolate always wanted cookies. to make chocolate. Yeah, no. I want, like, when when I'm long gone. Or to be the awesome little I, I don't want to be known as someone who, you know, had a charity and wrote children's books. And I want people to be like, you know what? I knew her and she was authentic. And she wow. would be the shirt off her back. And yeah. she was the nicest person oh that's and what i was gonna say that's kind yeah. of what i that, that's my that's legacy amazing i almost didn't ask you because i was like i think she, i know the answer is that she's <laughs> going to be known for helping out a alopecia awareness and i was not right that's why it's not good to assume so i'm glad i asked you that question so authenticity is so important and being genuine is mm-hmm. something that i feel is the greatest trait genuine having a caring heart being the nicest person I hope. I hope. And also, I think being empathetic. Yes. Mm. I, that is very having empathy. having empathy for others. And at school, we're talking about that. Mm. Having empathy is like putting yourself into someone else's shoes. Mm-hmm. Mm. And at school, I'm known as the kid who might look different, yes, but I'm really good with talking to other kids about how they're feeling. If mm. someone's in the corner crying, I'll walk over and talk to them mm. about what they're feeling. They're safe to tell me. Because I think you've you've had to learn empathy at a very have young age. I learned the hard way. Yeah, empathy. Sure. That's well, what I was talking about earlier, where like that, that adversity helped teach you something. Because when things are all, everything's great, and you know you, you got everything you want, and it's just kind of you're coasting through. Coasting is this, but a, a roller coaster. When you're down here, you you learn things that are going to help you be up here, but you wouldn't necessarily go up there if you're just kind of things are kind of cool, and I'm just kind of hanging around. You know, I think there's a lot of people that would trade um, 
you know, I want this to come out the positive way that I mean it, but, and intend on it, but trade their hair for your smile, for your personality, for your character. Um, I'm not saying other people don't have those things too, but to have it to your level, you, you have a special um, personality going on, right? So, and use it for good, which you are, you're already doing that. You're using it for good. Um, I like to wrap up with this, but I have a couple extra questions we're going to do at the end. What are three things you're most grateful for? Maybe we'll alternate. We'll start with Paula. Three things you're most grateful for. Ooh, um, family. Okay. I mean, we're Italian, so we have to say that, right? Yeah. Family. Um, I'm actually grateful for health. And I know, like, Rosie is not, you know, she's not hurting. She's, you know, it's not terminal. So I'm very grateful for her health. Yeah. yeah and I... I'm grateful for our dog. I'm sorry. Well, that's it for me. Or, I don't know. I I think just you know. Three. Just, I don't know. Cooking. Cooking. I, I love I love cooking and feeding people and and the community that results in having. Of course, it's any COVID. Italian would say. Yeah, I, don't I love feeding people. I do. I do. I'm it, thankful. It for brings me joy. People. Like I just I like to. Yeah. It's, nurturing side and bringing the food, bringing people together and good food and good conversation. Yeah. Yeah, you that is definitely a Paisan answer. Is, I know. But you know what I'm getting a kick out of is, is how aware you are, Rosie, of like cultures and the fact that you're saying that and <laughs> very aware that awareness is a great thing too, right? To be yeah. understanding what's going on in your environment. So why don't we let you uh, tell us what you're most grateful for? Family. It's number one, always number one. Family is always going to be number one. Friends. And I don't know. There's so many things I'm grateful. It's hard to come up with only three, right? But another one of them is I'm thankful that, I don't know. Coming Up Rosies. I'm thankful that Coming Up Rosies has became a part of my life and mommy's yeah. life. How about just simply the ability to be able to have this charity, right? Yeah. You have the ability to have that. Yeah. I was leading up to that. Yeah, totally. Just like being able to have a charity yeah. at nine years old is really something that I didn't think I was going to do at the age of two. Mm -hmm. But I mean, who knew? <laughs> I mean, who knew? This amazing book. What I want to ask you now, we're going to dive into some questions here. Do you enjoy reading with mommy? And is it pretty cool to be a, a have your own book where you're the character? That's got to be cool. Well, so my friends know me as like the intense reader. Like I'm reading Harry Potter. I'm on the fifth book. It's like wow. It's great. She won't yeah. let me read with her. I won't. Let I asked. Her. Okay. I wanna. I wanna. I wanna read it by myself. I want to feel accomplished. Like we just. Yeah. About. Mm -hmm. That's really good to be reading Harry Potter at nine. Right, nine yeah. years old. Who's yeah. your who, Who's your favorite st storybook character? It could be in any book. I'd say Augie. Oh. Augie? From Wonder. Oh, Augie. That oh, book know, Augie. is like my favorite. Oh my gosh, favorite. have you seen the movies? Watch the movie. Read so the it's books, about this kid. It's about this kid. And I told you earlier, it's, there's this kid. He was born with a face defect. And it's like, they've tried to help it. They've like moved Mold his jaw around. Surgery. Molded That's his face. Mm. You know, they've tried everything. It just didn't look normal. Mm -hmm. And you could tell that. And it's about like how he gets along with looking different mm -hmm. and and maybe you can relate I and like maybe I can relate I don't know um but it's just such an amazing book and I think that book can teach you a great big lesson if you're looking for a good novel and that book how is it spelled a-u-g-i-e a-u-g-g-i-e uh, and well, the book is called Wonder. There's a there's a Wonder. Second. The book is called Wonder. Um, the and main character's the, name is the Augie. Main, this little boy. Yeah, and then so there's a sequel to that, and it's called Augie. Mm -hmm. Augie and me. Very cute. And there's a movie. Maybe you should read the uh, book before you watch. The I mean, I suggest maybe you know bringing Kleenex if you're gonna watch the, the movie. Wow. Is it a is it a cartoon movie or is it like a live oh, no. action? It's real. It's, it's with real people. Like and a, mommy was like sobbing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Owen Wilson and um Oh okay. I didn't know it was so it's got you know some Oh yeah Julia Roberts is the mom like it's yeah have, wait I, have hold on random question have you seen Alexander and the Terrible Horrible No Good Very Bad Day or the movie or have you seen or have you 
read the Harry Potter books. I don't know if I'm going to, I'm going to lose a lot of points with two <laughs> notes to both of them. Yeah. I have not, I'm not a big Harry Potter fan, but I respect, yeah. I know, I know, I know. Hey, well, I have to go there's a lot of people that are going to tune me off. They're never going to. No, gonna no they're forgiving. Don't worry. They're forgiving. People they're are forgiving. forgiving. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm going to say something here. I hope I don't get in trouble here. I got mom on the line with us. I didn't really like to read when I was growing up, but do you know why? I know why now, because the, like you're interested in Harry Potter, the character. So when you read about it, Oh, you're just so excited. I didn't really, some of the books that we were reading, I didn't really fall in love with the characters in it. So I just was like bored. I wanted to go on to the next thing. But when I was about 15 years old, which is pretty late to start getting interested in reading, um, I would read about, you know, there's a band I really like, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So I read about their lead yeah. singer who had a crazy life story. And I tell you, it's it was it's a pretty thick book, probably about Harry Potter size. And I read one chapter every night before I went to bed. And there's 14 chapters, I believe. So in two weeks, I read a book. And I remember thinking to myself, shouldn't be a big accomplishment when you're 15 years old or however old I was. And I remember thinking, wow, I actually read this entire thing. And yes, any English teacher who's watching this, I used to make up when I had to write about my books, I would make stuff up and usually didn't really score too well on the quizzes on them and stuff. But I believe it's because of the interest factor. When you're interested in something, you'll go and do it. And that's really anything. So Rosie, I commend you. Like, you know, you're, you found something that you're interested in and um, you know, everyone has their own thing. You know, I definitely do like sci-fi. The sci-fi I enjoy is like back to the future. I don't know if you've seen that movie. I love Jurassic Park. That was one of my favorites. I want to see that. Uh, yeah. The one from 93. I don't know. Maybe I was about seven or eight years old. And I remember being pretty darn scared when we saw it at the movie theater. So I would maybe wait a little bit on it. Uh, I'm know. just saying, though, that like, you know, fantasy like this. this. Yes. So I had an interest in that stuff. But um, I'm not really a, a wizard. -y. And you might, have been like, you might have been like pretty scared if you saw the Harry Potter movies, too. Probably when I was. Yeah. They get more before. intense and more heavy. Um, as you progress in the books, yeah, there's a lot of murdering. Yeah, that's pretty heavy for yeah, anybody. It's like, right? you know. Yeah, it's tough. Now I have a question. If you wrote your own book, Rosie, if you were to write a book, what would your book be about? Yes, what would your book be about? That's the problem. I have a problem of like not thinking about what to write. You just like sure. to read. I just like to read that's creations okay. other yeah. people. Because I think, honestly, J.K. Rowling, she wrote Harry Potter on, like, the napkins of a cafe. She was that poor. Yeah. And her novel just turned into this bestseller. Yeah. And I don't know. It's That's hard. That's good, though. Like, you don't, there, you don't have to say, uh, I have this massive idea. I'm going to write a book tomorrow. I was just kind of curious if you had something that you would be. I um, might, yeah. Well, so I love to do softball, so I might want to write about softball. Something about softball would be cool. I will say, I will say for your your viewers that I myself never set out to be mm -hmm. an author. I never right. set out to run a charity. And here um, you are. I and here I am. And I think if there's anything that anyone can glean from my experience is that life doesn't go according to plan. <laughs> and True. I you know, if you told me five years ago you would have a charity and you would have to be, you know, write a book, I'd be like, you're crazy. Like about crazy. 10 years ago, you'd have, you know, Rosie and the story and the whole thing. Yeah, but I did, I, I just didn't know that this was going to happen. And my path of, of my career was in a different direction. And um, with Rosie's diagnosis and Rosie's personality, like mm. that just, it, I took a, a left turn and it was daunting and it was scary, but it, I, I felt like it was the right thing to do. And turn left. I haven't looked back. And yeah. so I'm just saying for those people who never say you're not going to write a book because you just don't know. I, I right. never say never anymore because who knows? Yeah. I didn't take that as you'll never write, Rosie. I just thought maybe you didn't have an idea yet, which was perfectly fine. How about this? What are you most excited for this year in school? This year excited for personal narratives we're writing personal, personal narratives, narratives. Yes. i'm writing mine on my dog Enzo. so you are there you go look at that <laughs> i think you just answered the the other question there you can do how about a dog that plays softball Ooh, Ooh that's goofy that's good. i like it um 
How about this? So I got, I got, I got one more thing and we can talk about whatever you want. And I know we're probably close to an hour, maybe a little bit over. And we usually like to keep them about an hour. Although yeah, yeah. I, have an, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of people tuning in to see Rose in here. Mm-hmm. If you could go anywhere in the world on vacation, where would you go and why? Well, coming up Rosie's, I've already been to Las Vegas. I've already been to Washington, D.C. Where my cousins are too. Anywhere and in the world. Where anywhere in the world. But it could, you could go to someone somewhere you have already visited or maybe somewhere you didn't go yet. If you could just snap your fingers and have it. You snap your fingers right now and you go 10 days to where? Italy, either Italy or Harry Potter World. Oh, Very cool. Now and the I real Harry Potter I, World or like the Disney version? The Disney version just isn't the real version. At Universal yeah. Studios, uh-huh. Potter World, they have the Quidditch field. They have the train mm-hmm. you can ride. They yep. have um, the pods deal. made and mm-hmm. have butterbeer there. They have these wands like Mm -hmm. you you know so the story is like when you get your wand you know this guy picks this wand for you and he sees the wand chooses you so there's like that kind of thing where Mm -hmm. i've heard you can choose this wand and you can like wave it at stuff and like fountains turn on it's really cool Mm -hmm. so i'd either go there or italy where my family is we were supposed to go there this year but then COVID happened and yeah yeah I wish I could stamp my fingers and, and make those two dreams come true. But hey, yeah. that's what I'm saying. And I'm, I'm getting it out into the universe. You made me think of one more question. Talking about superpowers a couple times today. If you could have a superpower, what would that be? I want the superpower to be able to turn into a mermaid. Mom. I would like the superpower to be able to turn into a mermaid. A mermaid. A mermaid. At first, I thought you said mummy. I was like, wait a minute. Is that because it's October? Or sprout like these beautiful mermaid. like gold and white wings and just be able to fly. Not me. I want to teleport. I'm I was going to ask, Paula, you're going to get your teleport anywhere. So then you could go to Italy and you can be in Harry Potter. Go to California, Italy, oh, that's right. Greece, teleport. But I could fly there because I'm. Rosie, you could be in the middle of a boring class and you could teleport right out of there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's now, I, I thought of one more thing and then you guys can maybe, you know, you could talk about anything you want before we wrap up. Do you think at some point, would you ever be interested in wearing a wig or you think, ah, I'm not really into that? No, I do not no. like wigs. They're itchy, but other people might. Mm-hmm. I have these headscarves and I don't really need them anymore. I want yeah. to give them to other people. The headscarves. Yeah. You know, yeah. She, That's awesome. It's so funny because even from a very young age, we always have offered her do you want to wear a wig? Do you want to wear this? And she's always I don't know. I don't very... want to take medication for it. I really don't care anymore. No hair, don't care. Yeah. Like, I don't need to change it. It's a, my I'm going to change something that I'm proud of. Yeah. And some days I feel sad about the way I look. Some days. But very, that's very rarely. It is and rare. my friends, like, my friends, on the very rare time that I feel sad, that's okay. My friends are supportive. But on that not rare time, my friends could say anything about me, and I won't care. Honestly, yeah. they could say I don't like the way you look. I won't. Yeah. Care. You know what? Though you were you were chosen to have this incredible story that's going to inspire more people. Because let's say if you had hair, you know, you'd be beautiful with or without hair. We both know that. Um, but at the same time, you know, maybe that story isn't told to the way that it's going to inspire the the world, and you're never going to have the headscarf. So there you go. You could be grateful that you have alopecia. How about that? <laughs> yes. Turn it all around, baby. Yes. I love it. This has been, this is like so remarkable. I love meeting you guys. You got friends here. I definitely want to introduce you to Isabel so you can talk to her. She would love that. That'd be a surprise. Maybe I don't even tell her. Maybe we, we coordinate it. And I say, hey, there's, I got a surprise phone call. Guess who's on the phone? Rosie from the book. And she would, she would lose it. That would be so That'd be fun. That'd be so awesome. Paula, anything you want to share before we let you go cook a nice Italian dinner? Oh, yeah. Well, tonight we're having macaroni and cheese, and it's not oh. home. But I, it's I, craft. It, Annie's type, which Annie's, I'm so excited to get to. Um, but I, do, I mean, first of all, thank you for letting us, you know, having us on the show, letting us tell our story. Um, and I don't know. I just, I, I love to hear other people's stories and, and how I love that you're entrepreneurial and you're, you're a connector and you're connecting people and letting yeah having this platform for people to tell their stories. And I think that's really cool. So thank you. Thank you so much. Rosie, thank you for your time tonight. Have an awesome school year. Give me a fist bump. Bam, bam, bam. Fist bump, fist bump. Guys, 
check it out. Cominguprosies.com on Instagram, coming.up.rosies and on Facebook, Coming Up Rosies. Thank you guys for being here tonight, Paula and Rosie Quinn. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I love you guys and thank you so much for tuning in. Check out more show notes and information on each episode at mikeduppodcast.com, M-I-K-E-D uppodcast.com. We're powered by Social Chameleon. You guys know what to do. Be great and be grateful. <laughs>